you already know who it is. It's your man, Whore Flick, Big Mitch. And I'm kicking in those with all three O's. And I'm bringing 28 101 because we Vegas sons. It's the Meadowlands. It's the Metals, man. Vegas Chronicles with your boy, Bolo Yang. And you already know, yes, indeedy, I'm on them things. Bang! You already know what it is. <laughs> Y'all know I be playing. I gotta put some music to my intro, huh? That's getting kind of old how I be saying it, but it's still cold, though. But anyway, welcome to Vegas Chronicles with your man, the horror flick from Super 6, Big Mitch. And today, <clears throat> like any other day, we're going to talk about actual factuals. Today, um, I'm, I answer questions, you know, sometimes people ask, you know, ask me questions. Uh, and I was asked uh, to name the, the, you know, the five most dangerous neighborhoods in Las Vegas. And if I did that, you know, um, it, you just can't name five because that wouldn't be fair. That just would be my opinion. And if I name five hoods that I think is the hardest, it's only my opinion. That don't make it true. But what I will do is I give it, you know, I say this right here. I won't put no number on the hardest hoods. I just name them. And if I don't name your hood, that means that you're not one of them, in my opinion, and it's only my opinion. So, um, number one, um, one of the most dangerous hoods uh, that it ever existed. You know, I'm, I'm gonna start off with the oldest. You know, was the Gerson. You know, the Gerson was unique in many ways. You know, I, I don't really need to go over that. You know, um, you know, the Gerson when it, in its first inception was more of a racial. You know. Uh, uh, area, you know, they were real hostile toward other race, you know, certain races over there before they became, you know, you know, got into the gangs and all that old stuff. So it's always been, you know, really active up over there. So Herbert Gerson was a, the most dangerous place to go at one point, you know, in Vegas. Herbert Gerson, everybody knew about that place, and you didn't go over there, you know. But uh, I would say another place uh, that that's dangerous, you know, you have to mention, and it's 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 in, in my era. And this at a certain time, and uh, the uh, uh, my era is when a lot of stuff really got to cracking. So I would say uh, Donna Street, Donna Street at one point was the most dangerous area in Vegas. You know, uh, back in I say uh, eighty nine, ninety, Donna was was probably one of the if not, one of the most dangerous places in Vegas to be. For real, it was cracking down there. They had more shootings than any other neighborhood in, in Vegas, and that's the statistics. You know, so Donna was a, a, a treacherous neighborhood you did not want to get caught in. All right? Um, Paru Turf, Madison Terrace. That's another neighborhood that's old and was very dangerous. And at the height, uh, you know, at the Paru's reign, that's one of the last places you want to get caught you know, over there, you know, like I said, I tried to walk through there, you know, when my parole officer, I told this story on how they chased me out of my shadow, you know, uh, uh, down the street. So Madison Terrace, you have to put them in there for sure. Um, and, and you can't, you can't, the coast at the height, the coast, when they was feuding with the Gerson behind the conference incident, the coast was a dangerous place to be. You know, because they was active over there, and plus, it was a lot of, you know, back and forth between the Coast and the Gerson behind that incident. And then Donna Street came out and allied themselves with the Gerson. You know, they went to war with the Six O's, but then they also picked up the war with the West Coast Bloods. And so the Donnas was going at the West Coast Bloods also. So the Coast became a very dangerous place to be, you know. So, uh, Sherman Gardens, the PBs, that's another place that was very dangerous, you know. I remember the war with the PBs in the 50s, you know, uh, that was a very uh, dangerous war, you know what I'm saying. But Sherman Gardens always, and that's like the oldest blood gang, the PBs, on the west side. It's the second oldest blood gang in Vegas, the PBs. So the, PP, the PBs and Sherman Gardens and the Jets has always been a dangerous area. You know, but um, 
it depends on what year because the PBs used to be about this year and then when it became about this year and got real deadly, you know, it got out of hand over there. Burgundy Square, you know, that's another area that was real dangerous to be, you know, you know, especially after the uh, Bad Oak situation, you know, uh, it was very dangerous to be over there in Burgundy Square. You can't forget about Burgundy Square. Regular states, regular states, you know, um, when it comes to the North period, I would say they right there with Donna or they second to Donna when it comes to no, no notoriety or notoriety. Cause them dudes right there, the NTGs, they, they was, a they would, they was a force to be, uh, reckoned with. So regular states and regular states, when they was playboy gangster, uh, Crips, uh, state playboy gangster Crips, they was active. So the states for sure. You know, and then you can't forget places like uh, White Street was, you know, um, an area where they sold, you know, where they made money. That was a money street. They didn't really get real active until Donna came out. When Donna came out, that's when they really got active. You know, and, you know, people like Jesse Bright, you know, uh, rest in peace, Noel Bright, uh, Tiger, uh, A-Rab, <clears throat> Big Brucey. D-Dub, Lunatic, Cheese, uh, David Roach, you know, uh, the White Streets, Big Country, both of them, the white one and the black one. Uh, them dudes over there, you know, they, they was about they, 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 they business, you know what I'm saying? White Street was, 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 was about their business, you know, they made money and they was with the function, you know. So White Street, you got to throw them up in there. The ABMs, you got to throw them up in there. You know, the ABMs, the Opera House, all over there in that area, they, they, they wasn't no joke. So it's a lot of hoods out here. And then I'm going to be, I'm going I'm to tell you something too, who don't get enough credit. You know, and it's not giving credit to ignorance. It's, they, they, they've been ignored. And that's 28th Street. 28th Street being the oldest Hispanic gang, they was once a deadly area to be into, 28th Street. So when it comes to dangerous areas to be in in Las Vegas, you know, those are some of the main areas. And I'm not saying that, that, that places like Carry Arms weren't dangerous. Del Monico, that's another place, another area that was uh, very, very, very uh, dangerous at one point. You know, everybody know about the dust that was very dangerous over there. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, you had smaller areas. You know, you had places like Casa Rosa when the Six Souls occupied it. You know, it was dangerous. Uh, Crip City was dangerous, you know. There's a lot of places in Vegas that, that was dangerous, but it was in certain areas. Even 40 Block was dangerous in a certain area when they was worn with the 60s back in 90, 91. 89 is when the 40 Block started, but 90 and 91 is when they really started cracking. You know, so the block, you know, they, they, was, they was active like that. They was a smaller gang that was real active like that. When the six O's was in Sydney Sioux, you know, the Sioux by themselves, everybody was cracked, you know, was, was active out here in Vegas, man. But that's neither here nor there, man. It's just like, you know, when you think about California and, you know, how they do their danger ratings out there, you know, you know, Vegas got the same thing, you know, but it's all my opinion and it's all stupid to me, you know. So, you know, I, that that's that. Let We can move on from that. I want to talk about something, something else. Hey, check this out. Y'all ain't gonna believe this, but my own family and I and I, and I mean I'm not gonna say no names. I don't got to. But my my it's a lot of my family members that support me. But it's some of them so evil that they they will ain't no ain't no length they willing to go to try to sabotage what I'm doing. My own family, even after all I've been through, and I don't even put a lot of stuff out here, man. What I've been through. And like, I don't really put this out here on here because that's between me and whoever, you know, I really got that issue with and God. It's some stuff is not for the internet. You know what I mean? And I'm mindful of that. Some stuff is not for the internet. So I don't go there. You know what I mean? But at the same time, I mean, whatever, like I say, I'm an open book. Whatever you think you can try to sabotage me with, bring it forth and let's deal with it. Because like I say, ain't nothing going to stop me from what I'm doing because what I'm doing isn't something that I put myself. This is something God told me to do. That's why he left me here. 
I keep telling you that. You know, I'm not no... I'm not going to let people use my past uh, 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 to hold me down. I'm going to use my past as a ruler to teach. I don't understand why people got a problem with what I'm doing. What I'm doing is positive. When I was out there and I was under the influence of, 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 of alcohol and drugs and I was doing ungodly things out here in these streets, you know, and people knew about what I was doing out here in these streets because my name used to ring. When I was doing that stuff right there, people was, was quiet as church house mouth. They didn't dare say my name. But now that I'm doing positivity stuff, positive stuff, and I'm trying to help the youth, and I'm, and I'm trying to use my life experience. Like I say, I'm an open book. I can use my life to teach. I've been where these youth is going. I've been there. I, 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 why did I have to join a gang when I was 10 years old? Why did I have to seek something, that, something I should have found at home? Why did I have to find it in the street? Why was I raised by bread? Them questions answer themselves. My daddy had me for the first four years of my life. My father had me. My father. And when the WIC program got started, when the WIC program got started, I was taken from my father. But my father had me for the first four years of my life, and I still remember when they surrounded Circle Park when he was pushing me on the swing. See, this is the cold part. This how good my memory is. So y'all want to talk about memories? This how good my memories. Is. My memory is. I remember he was pushing me on the swing. When they surrounded that park, and they came and they arrested my father in Circle Park in Vegas Heights. And I ain't never seen him again. Until y'all seen me in him and them pictures. Imagine that. He was all I knew for four years. He had me. That's when men did the right thing. They took care of what their responsibilities. My father, I remember him. He had me for my first four years of my life. And when the WIC program got started, I was taken from him. He was kicked out of the state of Nevada. But I always question this shit. Was I really wanted? Or was it because of the wick? Did they want me or did they want the wick? Because wasn't nobody fighting to get me before the wick program came out. He had me. That's why I say I have front row seats to all this. I used to be in a blue Malibu with him when he used to drag race. I used to be around Stretch Washington, Adrian Felton, Lionel Bell, Butch, all them that grew up with my father. I used to be around all them, the associates. So if you want to bring up memories, I mean, we could talk about it. Let's talk about it. Why was, I, why, why was I so angry? Huh? Why was I so angry? Huh? See? I don't, I'm, I'm not going to even go there, man. I'm not going to even go there. But my thing is just right here. My thing, my thing is just right here, man. What I'm doing, I know what I'm doing. It's, it's good. And I'm not going to stop doing it. And that's crazy. How your own family you hate on you. Your own family. It go deeper than your homies. 
It's not. It's bad enough you got to watch them, but you got to watch your own family. You got to watch your own family because some 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 sometimes your own family members they be so miserable, they want to take you down to their level and they want you to be miserable. All that time I did in the penitentiary by myself, I had to stand on my own. Wasn't nobody coming to the parole boards and begging them people to let me go. Not one time did somebody come to the parole board and, and, and ask them people to let me go. You see? Not one time. But now that I'm free and I'm out here and I'm doing the right thing, they want to be all up in my business. And throw jabs at me. Listen, God don't like ugly, and he fight my battles. And no hand raised, raised against me shall prosper. Believe that. God got my back. And I'm running the route he told me to run, and I'm going to get that ball in the end zone. What I'm doing, I know is right. Let me tell you something. Las Vegas ain't all about strip clubs and casinos. I come from the darkest part of Las Vegas. The part they don't tell you about. The part they don't want you to know about. I come from that part. I, I've been to the penitentiary. I did 20 years. I'm not proud of that. That's why I don't speak on that. I'm not glorifying that. I shouldn't have to went, have to go to prison to become educated. That don't make me nothing but a failure. I accept that. That's an L I took when I went to prison. When I went to prison, that's an L. I got caught. These other cats out here make prison seem like it's glamorous. Like it's cool. What's cool about being locked up? What's cool about losing your identity and becoming just a number? What's cool about that? Ain't nothing cool about that. When you go to the penitentiary, brother, you failed. The only next step to that is death. Because the penitentiary is just a mental form of death. So when you teach it, you tell the truth. Don't glamorize going to the joint. When you go to the joint and you get all you get all big and buff, you come up out here, man, that don't make you, man, listen, I'm, you can do that out here while you getting your education. If you want to become a part of an organization, be a cute all or a kappa. Join a real fraternity. Make it mean something. For real. Make it mean something. Now listen. To my family members. And they know who they are. I love y'all. God bless you. And um. I'm sorry. But. You know, I respect your feelings, but I got to put me first. I got to love me first, and that's been my problem, my Achilles heel. I've been, you know, so focused on everybody else and, and, and loving everybody else that I forgot to love myself. And now that I'm doing that, and I'm and I'm sincerely sharing my story with everybody, with the masses. I'm not. I, I don't. I, I don't got no big platform. You know, if I can just get one youth to listen to me, that's all I need, then I've done my job. I'm not a greedy dude. If I can just get one youth to listen to me, I've done my job. If I can just save one life, then I ain't going to stop. I ain't going to stop until I do. If I can just save one life, just one, I've done my job. And it's going to be people against me. That's cool. 
but I'm not worried about that. I can't be. I got to stay focused on the task at hand because at the end of the day, I'm on, I'm on a mission God put me on. And that's who I got to deal with. And he told me not to worry about nothing else. He would deal with them. And like I said, God don't like ugly. For real. So whatever you got planned for me, understand God is the best of planners. Okay, the best thing to do is focus on you. Live your life. Be happy that I'm not in the streets no more. Be happy that I'm using my life experience to teach the youth. Be happy for me. Why hate? Congratulate. Not every pat on the back should be your way of looking for a soft spot to stick the knife in. Some pat on the back should be genuine. Just like my intentions. Genuine. That's why when I start going live, I'm going to bring genuine people up on here. So we can have genuine conversations. About genuine topics. And come up with genuine solutions. With, with genuine solutions to, de to deal with uh, all these topics, man. For real. Any situations that plague our communities. Period. You know, that's what I'm about. That's what I'm on. That's what I'm going to stay on. And I'm going to stay smiling. I'm not going to be miserable. I'm not going to be mad. I'm not going to be bitter. Salute to everybody that support me, that's been rocking with me, Vato, Loco Abdul. Support to everybody that's been rocking with me on my platform. Support to my auntie, Cassandra. You know, so, so shout out to my auntie Cassandra. Shout out to my, my, my fiance, Libra. Shout out to everybody that been supporting me. Shout out to... The Hood Postman, shout out to Queen Marlena, shout out to everybody that been supporting my platform. Shout out to Big Weed, shout out to my cousin BG, everybody that support my platform. Shout out to Sally, shout out to everybody that be supporting my platform, that watch my videos. You know, shout out to my Brody Brandon, you know, shout out to everybody. And if I missed you, shout out to Big Sag, shout out to everybody. You know, shout out to my brody up over there in Colorado. You know what I mean? You know, shout out to everybody that support my platform and been rocking with me, man. I know it ain't lavish like everybody else, but it, it you know, it's about the quality of it. You know, what I give y'all, y'all know it's from the heart and sincere. I'm really for the solution. All that other stuff, I can leave that for the entertainer. Some people get on here just to entertain. And some people get on here to teach. I lead the entertainment for the entertainers. And y'all can separate the two. Y'all smart enough to know the difference on, 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 on who really getting on here just to entertain you and who really getting on here to teach. You know. So, with that being said, you know, um, when I bring Vegas Chronicles back, um, hopefully with Put in the comments what y'all want me to talk about. If y'all got any questions about Vegas Chronicles, uh, about Las Vegas, you can ask me. Or, you know, I, I'll just bring y'all a story of something, you know, that happened to me or something that occurred in Vegas. Y'all know how it go. It goes down over here in Vegas. I don't know what why people think it don't. It goes down over here in Vegas. It really do. It goes down over here, you know. And it ain't all about Naked City and all these other weird places they be showing y'all, man. They tore down a lot of uh, neighborhoods out here, you know. But, you know, it's a lot of people that's still around that knew how it was. And, you know, hopefully I can bring them on and we can talk about real Vegas, not this image that they trying to bring out and put forth because that's not Vegas. And then you got cats coming from out of town that's, that, that's doing it and putting their own spin on it, you know. Nah, ain't no 400 blocks out here in Vegas. Ain't none of that. Ain't none of that. That's some stuff that comes from out of town. That's not Vegas. Not at all. And anybody from Vegas that know Vegas, I'm talking about Elko babies, Spring Mountain babies. They know that's not Vegas. 
You know, that's, we don't know what that is. But with that said, y'all have a blessed, safe day. You know, I'm going to get on up out of here kind of early. I got something to do. Y'all, thank you for tuning in. And uh, you already know, it's your man, Whore Flick, Digga Ditch, Super Six, Big Mitch, 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 Mitch. And I'm going to forever be on them things, man. <laughs> and check this out. Whatever they come with, I ain't got to raise no sword and shield. God got my back. So when you see what's coming from behind me, be ready. Because it's going to be a cherry. You already know. God bless.